long time ago, there was a trapper that lived up in the mountains. He was not a very nice man. He found great pleasure in when taking his skin down to the trading post, which was a, a two-day journey from the top of the mountain where he lived, and uh, trying to fool the man who ran the trading post into buying some of the skins that were, well, frankly, worth nothing. You see, he would hide them right in the middle of the pile. He'd tie the pile tight, and he'd walk up to the counter, and he'd set them down on the counter, and and he would get to talking to the man at the trading post and trying to divert his attention. And, and hopefully, as the, as the man counted his furs, he wouldn't notice the inferior ones in the middle. One day, he made such a trip. He left his home, told his wife that he'd be back in a couple of days. His wife was not a very happy woman, but, well, what could she do? He lived on top of this mountain with this man who was unfair to other people, cheated people whenever he had the opportunity. Hunted on Indian land where he wasn't supposed to. Set his traps in the river that were not supposed to be trapped. Took furs, pelts from animals that were of no value. Just killed him, hoping that he could get something out of the furs by cheating somebody. Well, he came down the mountain to the trading post. And he had those furs bundled tight. And he had one particular fur that was from an old, old gray fox. It was tattered and worn and even had a few bald spots here and there had been an old fox there hadn't been any reason at all for him to kill it but he'd shot it right between the eyes skinned it anyway put that pelt right in the middle kind of rolled it up a little bit so he could just see the corner of it so he'd get counted the man that ran the trading post over the years had gotten wise to the trapper and he had a pretty keen eye as that trapper set those furs up there and began to talk about the weather and the rain and the beavers that year and all those things, the old trapper, he listened. He listened as the man counted the furs. The man that ran the trading post stopped in the middle of the bundle, reached in and yanked that old ragged fur out, tossed it down on the corner. You must think I'm a fool. I wouldn't give you a penny for that old fur. Huh, that must have been a mistake. I didn't mean for that one to be in there. I was going to throw that one away. I'm sorry. That was an accident. Uh, the man around ran the trading place just uh, chuckled. He knew it was no accident. Then he went on counting. The rest of the furs were pretty good. Gave the trapper a fair price. Sent him on his way. Don't forget this piece of junk. And he tossed that old fur at the trapper. He caught it in one hand. Tossed it across his shoulder. Stomped out the door. Oh, it made him angry. It made him angry. He could have at least gotten 50 cents for that fur. Oh, that old guy that ran a trading post. He was just getting too too smart for his own good. He'd have to start taking his furs elsewhere. Well, oh, what was he going to do? He might as well just toss this old piece of junk away. He grabbed it and went to throw it in the bushes. He heard a cough next to him. <coughs> Turned over and looked, and there, there sat an old Indian man. Why, he looked like he was a hundred years old, leaning up against the side of the trading post. Old tattered blanket wrapped around his shoulders. You could tell by looking at him that his eyesight was none too good. Skin on his fingers was wrinkled and hard and calloused. And the trapper thought a moment. Old oh, man! Hey, old man! <laughs> yeah, what do you want? You know... I've got something here for you. I, I saved it just for you. I saw you when I come in. I got here for you the finest fox fur that's ever been took on this mountain. Let me see. Trapper walked over, held that fur out. He held the, held the worst part towards himself. Let the one good part kind of hang down. You know, the man in the trading post wanted to give me a dollar. With his fur. A whole dollar. I told him no. I was saving it for my friend outside. Uh, see, it seemed like a, a nice fur. He ran his callous fingers across there. His eyes were so bad he couldn't see the, the worn spots, the ball spots. Why, I told, I told that man in the trading post this would be just the thing for that friend of mine outside to drape over his shoulders and keep warm on his cold mornings. Knowing good and well, 
There was very little warmth left in that tattered old fur. Well, that was mighty nice of you to, to give me this. Why, I would indeed, I would indeed like to be able to give it to you, but, but you know, it's been a lean year. I, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't sell it to the, to the trading post man for a dollar. I'll let you have it for, for 50 cents. Oh, 50 cents. Uh, I, I, I ain't got no money. No money. Such a fine fur as this, too. Oh, I, 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 I'd like to have it. Oh, I know, but... Oh, I tell you, it's been a lean year. Why? You got something something to trade for it, maybe? Got something of value? I got nothing but this old blanket. I am from afraid, old man, that ain't much. I wish we could work out a deal, but... Well, wait a minute. What's that around your neck? The old man reached up, grasped and held his hand. Well, this, this here's a... This is a... a, a a magic arrowhead, but I can't get rid of it. A magic arrowhead, I hear. <laughs> oh, man, you wouldn't be trying to spook me, would you? Get me to give you this fine fur for that old piece of flint around your neck? You wouldn't be trying to fool me by telling me it's magic, would you? You know, I don't believe in magic. What? It, 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 it's magic. It's magic. There's three three wishes in this side of the head, but but they're not. They wouldn't be good for you. You see, you see, the wishes the wishes can they can read the heart of the man that makes them, and and, and if your heart's not good, the wishes won't be good. <laughs> oh man, here yeah, quite a tale there. But in the back of his mind, the trapper was thinking, Why, that old arrowhead on a piece of leather, it wasn't worth much. But if he happened to run across one of those city folks who came out there hunting, well, that was quite a story. He could tell them that story. He was sure he could get a dollar, two dollars for that arrowhead. Pelt wasn't worth anything anyway. Tell you what, old man. Being as how you're a friend of mine, I wouldn't. I, I probably ought not do this. I'm. I'm going to say to myself in the morning, "You fool! You fool! You let that old man do it to you." But, but I'm going to make you a trade. I'm. I'm going to give you this here fine fur for that arrowhead. The old man, he, he hemmed and he hawed, but finally, thought of that nice warm fur around his neck was, was, was too much. So he made the trade. Well, the trapper, he took that arrowhead and he drew it over top of his head and let it hang down there. Went about his way. He didn't even give it another thought. <laughs> oh, yeah. Magic arrowhead, three wishes. Mm hmm. And he just went about. He had two days to get back up to his cabin. Long journey. He traveled almost that whole day. When he came to the river, he had to cross. Now, this river, when he'd come down, was pretty low. And uh, he'd just been able to kind of step from rock to rock to get across. But while he'd been gone, there'd been a terrible storm up on top of the mountain. And it had rained and rained. And the water had swollen that little old river into a big, wide, raging part. There was no way he could cross. It'd be days before the river got low enough. Wow. I'm going to be sitting here for days waiting for this river to go down. Oh, man. I just, I wish there was a way to get across that river. Suddenly, behind him, he heard a crashing sound. And he just had time to jump out of the way when a huge tree fell across the river. From one side to the other. That thing liked to kill me. Then he realized, huh, he had a bridge across the river now. What luck. Picked up his sack, got halfway across that tree. Suddenly, dawned on him. 
he had wished he could get across the river. And the tree had fallen. Like, like, like magic. Like, like his wish had, had come true. He reached up and he fingered that arrow hand. Could it be? Could it be that it really was magic? That there really were three wishes? <laughs> he danced right across that log to the other side. What a lucky day for him. Why now? He wouldn't even have to trap anymore. Up on that mountain, up on the top, it was full of gold and he knew it. But it was engine land. He couldn't go up there without getting killed or arrested for being on Indian land. But now, now, he could wish for all that gold. If he had to, he'd wish every one of those Indians dead off of that mountain. Better yet, he could wish that gold to come right out of the ground and pile itself up. He could just walk up pick it up. Ho, ho, ho. He was going to be a rich man. Going to live in one of them big houses. Do what he wanted to. Have power. <laughs> that fool old Indian got that ragged old fur. He began to walk through those woods tall, happy and proud. Possessor of two wishes. Anything he wanted. Pretty soon it was starting to get dark. He began to get hungry. So he stopped and built a fire, reached in his pack. His food was gone. Oh, it must have fallen out of the pack when he jumped out of the way of that tree. Oh, man. It's almost dark. Don't have time to shoot nothing. Can't trap nothing. I got another whole day to get back up to my cabin. I might starve to death. But wait a minute. He had two wishes. He could use one of them for some food. I'd still leave him one. If he wished for all the gold in the mountain, why, he wouldn't need any more wishes. He sat back and thought. What should he wish for? What would he like to eat? Well, one of them big, thick steaks that they made up down there town on the one of them big old fat cows and cut them a big old thick steak and broiled it on the grill. Maybe one of them, one of them fancy dinners, like in those places he never could afford to go in. No. If he was going to wish for something, he ought to wish for what he liked the best. And there was nothing he liked better than a nice, big, thick, juicy bear steak cut right off the flank. Loved that bear steak. Yeah. I wish I had a bear steak. No confidence was he in his wish. He got out his pan, scraped some coals away from the fire, set that pan down there, got it all ready to go, sat back against the tree and waited, watching that pan, expecting that steak to just poof, right there in the pan. But it didn't happen. He waited. He waited. Stomach started growling. Ah, oh, what a fool I am. Believe in things like wishes and magic arrowheads and all that stuff. I wished for me a bear steak and I didn't get one. And just about that time, there was a crashing through the wood. And out of the forest into the clearing right in front of him and on the other side of the campfire stood the hugest, meanest looking bear he'd ever seen in his life. His stake was there, on the hook. That bear held his arms wide and his long claws raked out, and he reached around and he hit a tree and knocked it flat to the ground. The trapper jumped up in fear, reached for his knife. It was gone. He must have dropped it too. That bear came around the fire, and the trapper moved the other way, and they circled around and around that fire. And the trapper thought, what could he do? There was no way he could outrun this big of a bear. He couldn't get to a tree in time to climb it. He was a dead man. 
But he did have one more wish. But that wish was for his gold. <laughs> what good would gold do a dead man? He could always, he could always poison the Indian's water or, or, or sneak up there at night and, 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 and get that gold. If he was alive, if he wasn't alive, he couldn't do nothing. So as that bear came around that fire, he started backing toward the tree and his back was soon up against the back of a tree and that bear came closer and he could feel the hot breath. And he said, I wish I could beat this here bear. All night long to the forest was a terrible battle. The crashing, the smashing of trees. Whole parts of the forest leveled to the ground as a two thought. And when morning came, there in the clearing stood the trapper, the great bear lay dead on the ground. The trapper stood up tall and proud. Why? He was strong enough to defeat that bear. He was strong enough to do anything he wanted to do. Why, he didn't have to worry about that goal. He'd go up there and take whatever he wanted. It's his newfound power and strength. He let out a big roar. <laughs> He started marching up towards his cabin. Nothing got in his way. He shoved boulders. He pushed trees down. As he came into the clearing, he called out to his wife, One caught cabin! The woman inside heard a very strange, terrifying sound. The trapper stood there and watched as the cabin door opened. And the woman stepped out and then quickly slammed the door back shut again. The trapper started marching across the yard. Didn't know what was going on, but that woman was going to pay for this. And suddenly the cabin door came open again. A rifle barrel stuck out. And the trapper fell dead with a bullet right between the eyes. His wife was a very good shot. Through the door, the cabin slung open all the way, and out marched the woman with a long, skinning knife. Why, when her husband got home, wouldn't he be proud? She killed the biggest bear in the entire forest. The trapper, he'd beaten the bear by becoming one. He had also had his wishes answered, just like the Indian had said, by his heart.